Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thank you for all my subscribers, those who are new, those who are just getting here. I will encourage you guys, as I've said in the past, if you wanna know what this channel is about, not only can you watch the videos as they are uploaded daily or as, as they are uploaded in whatever time I do, but you can also go to my playlist tab and make sure you're in my channel. Go to the playlist tab and you'll see a variety of videos that I have I have categorized there so you can look at different categories and just check it out and see what I do have there. I want to get right into this video and it's talking about jealousy. You know, jealousy can rise up in a man or a woman, a husband or a wife, and it can be founded or unfounded jealousy. But uh, I wanted to kind of reiterate on a teaching I did a while back and it's talking about how when someone is being unfaithful in their marriage, we're going to talk about marriage, okay? But I believe that if you're in a relationship with somebody, you can be warned by God. You can have a suspicion about the person when they are not being faithful. However, we're going to talk about married people because infidelity is something that is very accepted in Western society. It's not accepted as right, but if someone does it, you know, they're not going to be stoned to death or anything like that. Um, and not only is this happening, but it's also happening within the body of Christ. There's a lot of infidelity. There's a lot of people who say that they're Christians, they are cheating. And so one of the things that will happen is that husband or wife that's being cheated on, they may begin to get suspicious. And what's going on is when that happens, that spouse will make that person feel like they're crazy or, you know, something's wrong with them, they're over the top. But I want you to know that after reading this, as I read in the past and as I'm reading today, God does that. He's placing that in that person as a defense mechanism and as a way to protect them and to warn them of what the unfaithful spouse is doing. Sometimes God may do it some to people they're supposed to be getting married and God will warn that person, that guy that's getting ready to marry this woman or the woman that's getting ready to marry this man that's supposed to be a believer or Christian, that they're not right. And so I want you to know that the Bible says what's done in the dark will be revealed. The Bible says God reveals secrets, okay? Not every secret because we know there are things that we may have done and we don't want God telling that. If you repent and if it's something that has not done any serious harm to others, then no problem. But when you are continuing to do certain things, God is going to reveal it. So we're talking about husbands and wives here. When you are cheating on your husband or your wife, eventually they're going to get jealous and suspicious of you. And the reason why that begins to happen, even though they have no concrete, no concrete evidence of what you've done is because you're actually one flesh with your husband and your wife. You are one in spirit because you've come together sexually. When you go outside the house and you're doing certain things, whether you are having an emotional affair or a physical one, there is a stepping in of a third party into that marriage and that is automatically going to set something off in your spouse, whether they see it or not. That's when they begin to notice things that you're doing differently. They're gonna to begin to notice your schedule's different. They're gonna to begin to notice you're looking different. They're going to notice you're different with your phone, whatever it is. And sometimes the Lord just reveals what's going on to them in a dream of which they'll come to you and talk to you. And that is your that is your opportunity to stop what you're doing, come clean, whatever it may be. But if you continue, sometimes a spirit of jealousy will spring up. You know, jealousy is not always bad because God is a jealous God, but he's not psycho jealous. And jealousy, sometimes God places that and causes that to become aroused in that spouse because God wants them to realize there's an enemy in the camp, there's infiltration, and he's trying to protect you. So I'm going to read to you how it was done back in the days of Moses. Thank God for Jesus coming to die on the cross because this was a very extensive process. And now the Holy Spirit will tell you what's going on. You don't have to do all this stuff. But let's read this a bit. When you read your Bible page by page, you will discover all these great treasures and surprising events that took place. So we're going to read, what was it? I'm going to read you Numbers chapter 5, and I'm going to start at verse 11, and this is called the test for an unfaithful wife. 
Now I know many of y'all like, well, where's the test for the unfaithful husband? Just read. Okay, let's read this. All right, the test for an unfaithful wife. Okay, beginning at third, beginning at eleven. What is this eleven? Mm -hmm. So then the Lord said to Moses, "Speak to the Israelites and say to them: If a man's wife goes astray and is unfaithful to him, so that another man has sexual relations with her, and this is hidden from her husband, and her impurity is undetected, since there is no witness against her, and she has not been caught in the act, and if feelings of jealousy come over her husband and he suspects his wife that she, and she is impure, or if he is jealous and he suspects her, even though she." is not impure then he is to take his wife to the priest he must also take an offering of a tenth of an epa of barley flour on her behalf he must not pour olive oil on it or put incense on it because it is a grain offering for jealousy a reminder offering to draw attention to wrongdoing so a reminder would be bringing bringing to remembrance or bringing to light anything that's being done in the dark Okay, so that reminder offering is meaning we're going to bring something to light that no one knows about. So the priest shall bring her and have her stand before the Lord. Then he shall take some holy water in a clay jar and put some dust from the tabernacle floor into the water. After the priest has had the woman stand before the Lord, he shall loosen her hair and place in her hands the remain the reminder offering and grain offering for jealousy while he himself holds the bitter water that brings a curse. Then the priest shall put the woman under oath and say to her, If no other man has made sexual relations with you, and you have not gone astray and become impure while married to your husband, may this bitter water that brings a curse not harm you. But if you have gone astray while married to your husband, and you have made yourself impure by having sexual relations with a man other than your husband, here the priest is to put the water i'm sorry here the priest is to put the woman under this curse may the lord cause you to become a curse among your people when he makes your womb miscarry and your abdomen swell may this water that brings a curse into your body so that your abdomen swells to or your womb miscarries then the woman is to say amen so be it now what the king james version says it does not say uh that your womb is scary or or your uh your abdomen swell it just says that your thigh will rot so i don't know which is which okay i don't know if if it says may your thigh rot i don't know if if that is what it means to miscarry i don't know all right i don't know if it means she's gonna miscarry the child of the man that she may be pregnant by um, but it does say uh, make may the Lord make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell okay so let's continue so she says so be it now 23 says the priest is to write these curses on a scroll and then wash them off into the bitter water he shall make the woman drink the bitter water that brings a curse and this water that brings a curse and causes bitter suffering will enter her the priest is to take from her hands the grain offering for jealousy wave it before the lord and bring it to the altar the priest is then to take a handful of the grain offering as a memorial offering and burn it on the altar after that he is to have the woman drink the water if she has made herself impure and have been unfaithful to her husband this will be the result when she is made to drink the water that brings a curse and causes bitter suffering, it will enter her, her abdomen will swell and her womb will miscarry and she will become a curse. If, however, the woman has not made herself impure but is clean, she will be cleared of guilt and will be able to have children. Okay, so this then is the law of jealousy when a woman goes astray and makes herself impure while married to her husband or when feelings of jealousy comes over a man because he suspects his wife. 
The priest is to have her stand before the Lord and is to apply this entire law to her. If the husband will be innocent of in, the husband will be innocent of any wrongdoing, but the woman will bear the consequences of her sin. So I guess what they're saying is this: if this woman, when they send her womb to miscarry, it means that if she has been out there and have been unfaithful, okay, this is what I'm understanding, is that she will not be able to bear children. That means he's going to, she, she will never be able to have children if she has been out. So no children for that man that she's out with, and she will not be able to have children for her husband either. Now, if you look at this, this is a lot, there's so many steps, but it is something that was important enough for God to make a law and protocols and procedures to find this out. So God is not turning a blind eye and still does not turn a blind eye against sin of adultery or fornication. The Bible talks about this. So what it also, what I'm bringing home to you all is the fact that jealousy can be stirred up in a spouse when there's infidelity. Now, no one is going to be bringing anybody before any priest to see what they're doing and drinking this water. And if you have been unfaithful, then this is going to happen. And if you're not, then you're going to bring forth seed. What is happening now, guys, is that God is a high priest. No longer we need to bring anybody before God. I'm sorry. Jesus is a high priest. He's the mediator between us and the father. So therefore, when things are being done, the Lord is going to allow your husband or your wife to begin to suspect you, begin to pick up on some things that you're doing. And you have the opportunity when that person comes to you to stop what you're doing, confess, okay, or it, you, you know that you were about to do something, you better stop and take those warning signs because God is not going to have your spouse to be mocked and to be fooled. And so there are a lot of people, what they're doing is when you have a husband or a wife who's filled with the spirit of God and the spirit of God calls you to the carpet through your wife by calling you up and saying, listen, I'm suspecting this, or the Lord showed me this in a dream, or I sense this is happening, or I just feel unsettled. And they talk to you about it. You have the opportunity right there to cease and desist and stop what you're doing. But when you go forward and you keep doing what you're going to do, and then you say you're crazy. So in other words, you call in the Holy Spirit crazy. In other words, you're telling, the ho telling your husband or your wife that the Holy Spirit is a liar, sort of like Ananias and Sapphira. But now because no one is falling dead on the spot, people are very comfortable with moving forward with the infidelity and continuing the affair and doing all these things when you're being sought out. So now you're calling your husband, your wife crazy and jealous when you are in fact sinning. Again, there are two types of jealousy. There's that jealousy where someone is just just jealous for no reason. And in that sense, you as a spouse need to go before God and deal with that because that spirit can bring just bring destruction and it can really it's 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 it brings shame because if you are suspecting your spouse and now you're telling other people and you're spreading rumors, it's gonna bring shame. You see, remember the the in the Bible says the priest uncovered her head and in order to go through this process. But what happens when you're a man and you're just jealous for no apparent reason, you have to go before God just or jealous, a man or a woman that's jealous. You need to go before God, just like this husband did. He didn't just go crazy on her. Uh, he didn't go and tell people things about her. He suspected her. So this husband will take her before the priest. And now if you're feeling that you need to take, you need to take your, the issue before God. And also if you are just jealous for no reason, you need to go before God, the high priest, and you need to let him know, I have this issue. I have this problem because just like with Cain, the Lord was telling Cain and talking to him, hey, sin is at the door, but you don't have to fall for it. But if you continue to, to be jealous because of the things that's happened in the past and for no reason, you have no reason your wife or your husband loves you, you're going to cause destruction. You're going to cause destruction and you're going to cause destruction to yourself because God is not smiling at that. 
This is no longer necessity. The priests are no longer necessary. You go before you go before God and you humble yourself and you deal with your issues. Okay? So that you do not begin to bring shame by uncovering your wife's and your wife's uh head and uh metaphorically and doing things to bring her shame telling people things you're suspecting things you're shaming her if she's talking to someone at work you're calling up you're jealous you're crazy it's you know uncovering her head it, it, or it, or bringing down her hair which is her glory was is like bringing shame to her she can't go anywhere. She can't do anything because you're jealous. You've got to get that under control. Your husband can't go anywhere. He can't do anything. He's giving you no reason to suspect him, but you're jealous of everybody. You're jealous of his friends. You come to the job. You, you're just a mean wife. You have to go before God and allow the Lord to deal with that because you bring him shame. You'll be like just bitterness and, and just rottenness to his bones if you're this way. These are for the individuals. You have absolutely absolutely no reason to be this way other than what you think your past your insecurities all right now the others guys i want to let you know that god will god will cause that jealousy to rise up in your spouse because there is there's been some infiltration in the marriage he's warning them he's letting them know because it's extremely dangerous when you're laying with somebody now you're trying to not only bring possible differences in body fluids or whatever but you also carry the soul your soul tied to this person and now any issues they have you're transferring that into your bed with your husband your wife and also you may begin to reject them be sexually and in other ways and emotionally because someone else is there you become one flesh with someone so there's a third party and that's what caused the division and so now there's no more a priest to go to, but the high priest, which is Jesus Christ. And so when your spouse begins to go to God because you're not listening, God's allowed them to, to talk to you. He's going to step in now. If you don't stop what you're doing and if you don't get out of that situation and come clean where you need to, God is going to step in. And there's going to be problems in this situation. The woman... Uh, she was cursed okay but i want you to know god will curse the husband as well he's going to step in if that husband is doing wrong and he's mistreating her and bringing her shame and sleeping around god is going to step in and so i would say husbands and wives in these cases understand that god understand that feeling of jealousy don't let that person make you feel like something's wrong jealousy is your warning when your spouse is actually doing something wrong he is warning you he's he's shown you because something else is there when we put something before god it says god is a jealous god that means he's aware of something that you're doing and a lot of times what happens these individuals because they are cheating and they went way out of town and you have no proof then all of a sudden they want to play this game but they they are so caught up in their game that they're forgetting there is a all-knowing, all-seeing, omniscient, omnipresent God that sees things and will warn you for your protection. And guess what? Overall, he is going to protect, he's going to vindicate, and he's going to come to the forefront to protect your husband or your wife from your shenanigans. So, Sometimes there are spouses that's out there doing wrong and they like to play these games and make you feel like, oh, something is wrong with you. When in fact, the Holy Spirit is opening up your eyes and showing you. And so when they refuse to do what's right, the Holy Spirit will continue to uncover things and uncover things and uncover things. But in the meantime, now you got to use the wisdom of God and discernment and discretion because what happens is when they're caught, now they're going to say, well, you're supposed to be a Christian. You're not supposed to do this. Sometimes the church will come in and try to tell you what you need to do in your marriage and in your relationship. Well, you almost caught him. He didn't do anything. She didn't do anything. You just caught them talking. No, God has warned you before the penetration. God has warned you before the STD. God is warning you and telling you to get out of the way before the fatal attraction attraction incident before they want to hurt your children to kind of get to to get you out the way or get them out of the way or so they'll think if there are no kids then they can leave you for to marry them so 
what I just want you all to understand is that God is in every arena of our lives and he cares and he will warn you and he will warn you. And if you're the person that's doing this and you're listening to this message, when you know that you're doing wrong, okay? It's not, well, I'm not sleeping with them. I'm just talking. God is revealing that. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't met with them. We're just talking long distance. God is revealing that because that is going to lead to something. Oh, he's not my type. She's not my type. I would never. We're just flirting. We're just bantering. We haven't done anything. Oh, we don't kiss. We just bump and grind. God is looking at all of that. Or I don't I don't allow the person to kiss me or or we just do this. We haven't I haven't gone far yet. All we do is we talk sexually and we're just exchanging numbers. While all that is going on, you have to realize something is happening in the supernatural. And what happens is you forget that your spirit. So the body, the flesh, the natural mind goes, oh, there's no way they will know this because I deleted everything before I got home. Oh, I went across town. I did this when I was out of town. There's no way he will know. There's no way she will know. But the spirit knows. And the most dangerous thing that you can do on top of stepping out and flirting and doing all these different things is to justify it, minimize it, dilute it, make your spouse feel like they're overly jealous and crazy, making them feel like something is wrong with them. The worst thing that you could do is to continue doing these things and trying to make them out to be a fool. Disobeying, staying, trying to double down on your wrongdoing double down on saying it's innocent it's not innocent it's something that you're doing and god is going to cause that's that the jealousy within them is going to spring up they're going to know because their spirit there's just going to be a knowing that's what happens there's a knowing a feeling and then the spouse begins to ask more questions than usual they begin to to they never used to ask you about your phone but now they're going to ask you about your phone they never used to question you they didn't never used to call you during lunchtime but suddenly they're calling you during lunchtime suddenly they're coming to the gym they never used to come to the gym they never, never used to go but now they're suddenly doing that because their spirit is on alert because God allows them to realize something is coming and he's protecting them somebody's out of position and God is saying your husband is out of position your wife is out of position you need to know I'm stepping in Open your eyes. I'm showing you in a dream. I'm showing you in a vision. He will allow you to discover things because he's shown you what it is. And this is not a matter of, oh, you're a Christian. You shouldn't do that. No, you should not be cheating on your spouse. You should not be texting. That's not Christian. That's not Christ-like. So the reverse psychology shouldn't be coming into play. The double down and the, well, I'm not, I'm being neglected. If you're being neglected, then be honest about what you're doing and not play games because that just takes everything off the table being neglected if you feel unhappy that's not a, that's not an okay for you to go out there and to cheat to go out there and to say we're just talking to minimize your spouse's feelings and say you're acting you're overreacting because as you can see here in the word of God there was no such thing as overreacting they were brought before God and so I will say to any spouse out there, go to the high priest who's Jesus. He is a mediator between us and the father. And any issue and anything that you may be facing with your spouse, lay them out before God. Lay your heart out before God. Cry your tears before him because he is going to step in. All right, guys.